Hola, Kinalito, aka Mahadi, not Mahali. I'm the girl that calls four countries home. Welcome to my channel. I call Lesotho home because that's where I was born. I call South Africa home because. Well, I am South African. I call Great Britain home because I am Great British, honey. And I call Australia home because that's where I live. Welcome my guest today. Long time coming. <laughs> she is a repeat offender. <laughs> and today we are re-recording this. We recorded this on Sunday. So today as we record this, is Thursday. We had to come back because there was no sound. How are you today? <laughs> I am very well, thank you. <laughs> right, let me pull up my questions. Man, we started out, it was so good, like, you know, I started out, I had my icebreaker questions, I had, oh, it was so you beautiful, organized. so wholesome, <laughs> listen. and now I'm like, why do we have to do this again? <laughs> Everything happens so, <laughs> for a reason. So when we, as soon as we realized that we didn't have sound, I told her that, girl, we are wearing the same things. So, <laughs> so I got home, I took them off, put them away. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> same, same. So who is this? Who is my guest? Who is this person that Mahadi is with today? <laughs> she is the beautiful African queen from Kenya. Oh, stop. She is Kisi. <laughs> Kemunto Rita Omari. Mm. And such a blessing to have her back. She has been here years ago. And some of you have been asking, where is she? What is she doing now? What's happening now? So Rita, welcome to my channel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So how would you introduce yourself if you were to introduce yourself? Yo, like, honestly, you would think that knowing we were coming to record, I should have kind of prepared that done no, a bit of research no, yeah <laughs> and and know what to say yeah, i think yeah. because most of the time um this is usually an interview question so like in my head it's usually like yeah you talk about yourself your experience your you know yeah but, but this is a social thing i, I don't have any experience okay. like I, I feel like i have <laughs> nothing on the social front to bring to the table i feel like you have done like a perfect summary really um, you are. and as i said last week you pronounced my last name perfectly it's 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 one of those like it's the small things <laughs> i feel um but yeah no my name is rita as you said i call one country home yeah <laughs> <laughs> hopefully <laughs> hopefully someday i might get to call australia home but for now i just call kenya home okay. and yeah no no i'm i'm so happy to be here this has been a long time coming as you said yeah. it's been uh, yeah it's it's grace um like it's just it's just amazing how things have worked out because mm. after trying to nail this for it's been over a year i think i feel like it's been more than or a more year. than a year yeah. right um and then things didn't work out on sunday and then i'm still available within the week oh. before my week actually gets busy Girl, thank it's you been, so much <laughs> it's been yeah it's been so good so yeah yeah no um i am a last born in a family of three um all my family is still back home yeah. so i'm alone here um in the sense of like my direct family is not there but i do have a very strong um family of friends that i'm ever grateful for i would just finish with saying i think i'm a very curious person i love asking questions i love knowing what's going on in someone's mind like i, yeah. I, I like yeah, yeah okay. i like wholesome conversations i suck okay. at small talk <laughs> i love baking and disclaimer, I, I, I am a, I am a hands talker. I talk with my hands mm. a lot. So <laughs> if you see me moving my hands a lot, I promise I'm not having a seizure. I just, I just don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I, I just talk with my hands a lot. So <laughs> let's just get that out of the way. Even though you say you're not a social person, but on Sunday, you were a little bit late. And today as well, we had to change our times several times. And thank you so much you know, for being flexible yeah. in changing your time. But you were late again for the same reason you need to tell people where they can find you because we didn't know that you bake <laughs> and you get orders and everything uh, that's 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 stretching it a bit <laughs> um, <laughs> so no um, i've been i've been baking for some time mostly for fun mostly for friends mostly for the house yeah. um, so did you do you learn baking back at home no it's just Ooh. something i am um, I have taken an interest in which, funny enough, my my wow. my my elder sister bakes actually. Okay. P 
professionally. That's not what she does for work, but yeah, she, she does bake she professionally and takes orders. Yeah. Um, I have a cousin who also bakes, so maybe it's, maybe it's a family thing. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to take it a bit more seriously now. Um, I'm learning how to frost. Baking is not the problem. Frosting is what I'm trying to learn. Yeah. Um, I had my very first... Actually, when I came on Sunday, that was my very first paid order like that was my Ooh. first first um paid order so baby steps baby steps oh my in goodness. the past when i've been baking i've been baking for fun for friends yeah. like not charging anything so mm. that was the first time i was doing a paid order and yeah today was the second one today's the second oh, one wow listen so, <laughs> it, looks like, it looks like this recording is coming with blessings amen <laughs> amen <laughs> yeah so yeah slowly working on that um yeah i'm, I'm hoping it can be something yeah. like i i love being in the kitchen i feel like i i wow. I, I yeah it's my go-to kind of okay. pastime or stress relief yeah. so cooking or baking but mm. i would like to actually hone in on baking yeah, and okay. yeah okay okay have a little something something Fair on the side enough. you know <laughs> so i think today i'm gonna ask you what perfume do you wear she smells yeah. so good. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, thank I you. I forgot to tell you on uh, Sunday like, when I gave yeah, you a no, hug. I was, mm, she smells really good, actually. I want to know what perfume I this is. Much coming. I don't know how to do it myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it is... It is... What is it called, actually? Um, It's called... Not Baccarat. Baracat, I think. It's inspired by the Baccarat Rouge perfumes, but it is mm. an Arabian scent kind of there's this new trend with arabian perfumes that kind of get inspiration from um the already mainstream popular perfumes so i think the one i'm using gets um its inspiration from baccarat rouge but it's an arabian scent wow, i don't so. even think i've heard of this i probably right. have seen yeah but i don't know how like to pronounce it maybe it's, it's a it's a thing that's actually blowing up so wow. um yeah it smells so, so good thank you right so is there is there um, a song that's in your head right now right now i actually have like three. <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> okay and and i can't prepare this time okay. <laughs> <laughs> um so um i am a kind of person who listens to kind of all kinds of music mm. um i love exploring like i love exploring um, different genres of music and okay. i love 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 it when people send me music guys if you have awesome jams that yeah. you'd like me to listen please send me yeah send them to my head or like put them in the comments oh like subscribe and share yes <laughs> yes <laughs> please and yeah just put them in the comments like yeah i i listen to a wide range of music but i'm going to do i think my top three i can go more than three but i'll do the top three so okay. that the video is not too long number okay. one is a swahili song Okay. Um, by a group in Kenya, a Christian, an Adventist music group in Kenya called Heavenly Echoes. It's called Tanzu. Okay. I tried to okay. look for the definition of Tanzu. I'm not sure what it means. <laughs> like my, my Swahili is terrible, but the song itself is based um, on the book of Daniel chapter three, um, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were being thrown into the mm. fiery furnace, kind of thing. So the song is oh, around okay. that, yeah, yeah, mm. um, and kind of like urging us to. Obviously, we know we're living in end times, so kind of urging us to prepare ourselves to be, you know, we know yeah. that there's a great controversy and things, so like urging us to stand firm. Wow. That's the first one. Okay. The second one is the one I still told you about last week. It's yeah. called Flowers. Oh, I'm um, roses. Okay. By yeah. Samantha, I'm not sure how to pronounce her second oh. name. Abbott, E B E R T. Okay. I'm not how to, sure how to pronounce it. But yeah, and as I told you, it's like kind of knowing kind of trusting god through your hard seasons mm. and knowing that he's by your side yeah. so the song kind of takes on this conversation kind of thing where mm. you're talking to god like i don't understand why i'm here mm. in the, like i don't understand why i'm going through this hard time and then god is like you know my child like you need to trust me i'm holding a watering can because flowers grow in the valley kind of thing it's, ah. beauti it's a beautiful song it's a beautiful song oh, and lastly um, there's a song called Never Walk Alone by Hope Dust, D-A-R-S-T. And oh, you actually, you need to listen to that song. I, I need to listen to you these need, songs. You <laughs> need to listen to these songs. Um, and it's kind of, I love the chorus. Like the chorus, that's like, I'm a witness to your faithfulness. Like kind of trusting, like knowing that God has you like, 
in all the things that you've gone through that you can trust God wholeheartedly mm. that he'll never let you go that he's always carrying you through yeah, yeah. so Word. that is um like kind of trusting that God is faithful no matter what I go through I'm never walking alone yeah so yeah sure. those are the, I love them those are the top three I love them so the last yeah. time we came and recorded was four years ago mm-hmm. and um hey, I almost asked you how old were you four years ago <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> I mean, mm. I was younger. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm old and wiser. <laughs> so four years ago, you told me that you came to Perth in 2017. Mm. That means you've been here seven years. This is my seventh year, yes. You know, the Bible and seven years and the significance of the seven years, mm. you know, the year of completion. Mm-hmm. The Bible, there were seven years of famine, seven years of riches in Egypt. Creation. So, you know, creation, yes. So how do you feel now that you've been here seven years? Do you feel like something is about to happen? Listen. It's the seventh year now. Things funny are thing, funny thing. I, I am not I'm not superstitious by by any chance. I'm yeah. not superstitious. I don't believe in zodiac signs, blah blah blah. However, for some reason, seven is my favorite number. I, uh. I, I can't explain it. But yeah, maybe it has something to do with the completeness and everything. And my birthday is on a sev- in the 7th of October. So there's uh. just something about seven. That's... Okay. Yeah. And I, yeah, I do believe it's going to be a good year. Um, I was speaking to some friends earlier um, this year. And the last couple of years have been a bit difficult um i think the last couple of years i've been starting the year a bit pessimistic it's like yeah it's the new year you know whatever mm. like uh, yeah. not really psyched about it mm. but this year this year like wow. when the year began i was just like this is it like it's going wow. to be a good year like yeah it's going to be a good year oh, wow. and it has been it, it started off a bit rough yeah um <laughs> <laughs> but I feel I'm in the best friend of frame of mind I've been in in the longest time. Okay. Um, and yeah, as I was saying, like in the beginning, when I started there, I, I was talking to a friend, I was like, I'm perfectly optimistic about, about this, this year, year, that it's going to be a good year. That's and so good. Yeah, it's, it's been a good year. It's going to be a good year still. Can you share a little bit of what has happened this year that makes you feel like, you know, this is actually becoming a good year as you have felt like this is going to be a good year. Um, first and foremost, I've finished school. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, blood, sweat and tears. Blood, sweat and, and tears. tears. Especially the tears part. A lot, a lot of tears. Um, but yeah, I have finished uh, my second master's degree. Um, <laughs> and I'm hopefully graduating in September. Um, and my parents are hopefully going to be coming. I'm going to try and move, you know, heaven and earth to have my parents come. And that's going to be the first time I'm seeing them in seven years. Oh my goodness. Um, so like that in itself is like enough to make my year, if that makes sense. But also (laughs) I'm turning 30 this year. So (laughs) stepping into a new decade and whatnot. So, um, like I'm just. I, I just have this excitement mm. about the year and what it brings. Like, it's just, I just feel it's going to be a fantastic year. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I'm, I, I can imagine you're, busy, <laughs> you're probably wondering, wait, if you had seen our last recording, the last recording, she was doing her last semester of um, Master's in Forensic Science. Mm. And you were probably thinking, wait. Hang on, another master's. What's going on? You know? <laughs> so, yeah, th- this girl actually shifted <laughs> careers. Like, t- tell us about it. Because last I remember, you wanted to go back home and do, you know, work in forensic forensic science or forensic yeah, yeah, yeah. something, yeah. you know, yeah. back in Kenya. You're still here seven years later and you're still studying. 
And you're not doing forensic science, are you? I'm not. What's going on? <laughs> Tell us, <laughs> <sighs> yeah, Tell no, us what you're studying and what influenced the change. That's that's a that's a wild story in itself. All right, so I just to make it clear, I still have like forensic still holds a very special place in my heart, and I feel I am going to circle back to it at some point. Okay, I think. Okay. Um, but I finished um my forensic science, and I was like, okay, you know, what next? And wanted to. Um, you know, start practicing. Like that that was the that was the aim mm. at the time. And I think around the time my my dad got diagnosed with diabetes. Um he's he's okay. I early stages, early stages, so that he can control with diet. He's not on any medication or oh, insulin cool. or anything. Um but yeah, and I don't know. I don't know. There's just this shift. I I have always wanted to end up in healthcare somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, when the before the idea of so back home I did forensic science at undergrad. So when I came here, I was doing it at masters to specialize and yeah. then kind of you know hone in on a skill and yeah, as I said, go back home because they were opening this huge forensic club back home and I was excited mm. to to get into that. Um, but before the idea of forensic actually came up. The, the discussion was between should I do medicine or law? Okay. Before, Before I went, went into, into forensic. forensic science. And then when forensic came up, I was like, okay, aside from watching, you know, the CSI and mm. it looking like a lot of fun, I was like, this is actually something <laughs> yeah. I would enjoy because it's a mixture of medicine and law, like, and mm. obviously other things, but it's, it, it was like a sweet in between. Okay. So I was like, I can get the best of both worlds. Mm. Um, but when, again, when I went into forensic, I wanted to end up as a forensic pathologist so this okay. is people who kind of do autopsies and yeah. looking for evidence and whatnot mm. um in cases of suspicious deaths mm. and then when i was on my placement when i was in third year um when i was kind of you know talking to the pathologist at the time i'm like yeah this is what i want to go into you know how do i go about it they're like oh um unfortunately you can't use your degree to get there like this is a branch of medicine so you need to go back to med school um and then specialize in pathology, and then specialize in forensic pathology. And I'm like, <laughs> after all that, <laughs> yeah. That, and they're like, yeah, you're looking at about, like, if you were to go back to med school, you're looking at another about eight, nine years. So you I was like, you seem to have to start from year one. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how I felt. I was like, ah, you know, the, no. I have one year to graduate. We'll figure it out down the, the road, yeah. but the 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 kind of the the seed to go back into healthcare was kind of again planted at that point. Mm. But I was like, ah, we'll see, we'll see how we go about that. Um, and then now after my dad got sick, um, and he's okay, guys, he's okay. It's, it's oh, nothing yeah, serious, but yeah, after he got um diagnosed, and I don't know, and again, I ha- a lot of people around me were nurses, like. I, 90 percent okay. of my circle i feel yeah. like nurses yeah here um and I, don't, I just had that pull again and initially it was kind of going to nursing school was like i don't think i have the strength to go to med school so maybe going to nursing school and do well and see if i can use it to bridge to get into med school down the line like that was the that was the That's rough idea at the time mm. but i was like no, no no let me get into nursing school and you know see how it goes um and my elder sister is a doctor actually Oh, so I was like, yeah, yeah, like it looks like the one that bakes. Yes, the one All that right. bakes <laughs> <laughs> is a doctor. So I was like, okay. uh, yeah, b- b- like the, the 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 seedling of wanting to get into healthcare has always been there. Um, and I was like, yeah, it's mm. it's it's a huge risk. It's now or never. So I did not even look for jobs in forensic science. I just finished, um, and before I would start like looking for jobs in forensic science, I was like. Okay, let's do this. Like, no knowledge is wasted knowledge. You so, I just jumped right in, and yeah, that's how I ended up in. Nursing. So you you finished your semester, like you finished your masters in forensic science and went straight into nursing. Like the so it no it, break. There was there was technically no, but somehow yes. So I finished in December, um, and 
was trying to get an intake into one of the unis. I was trying to get into ECU. They have a January, February intake. Mm. So I tried to get into that and they kind of delayed and da 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 da. Oh, and that's okay. how I ended up in Curtin for the mid media break. So, which oh. I think is God's grace. So I got like a six month okay, break. break. Breather, but you were willing Breather. to keep going. Yeah. Just keep yeah. bring, a, yeah. bring so on <laughs> something else. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so jumped from that to that. And yeah, I, I, I don't know that I would recommend it, to be honest. I, I don't know that I would recommend like, it to like anyone. Like <laughs> so, you know, I'm curious to know, like, like, why do you think that that's what you do? Like, it seems like you, you want to always be busy. It's like, um, like, what's, what's that from? Is it just, um, I mean, it could be like just you're just a workaholic or you just want oh. to keep busy or mm. you're running away from something. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the time, I was like, okay, growing up in an African setting. Yeah. There's how you're always pushed to study, to education, to, like, it's like, it's, it's yeah. so book oriented. Like, it's so, it's, so education oriented yeah like above it's like everything else can wait yeah study i remember at some point um i wanted to i don't remember what extracurricular activity i wanted to do and the 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 i'm um, speaking as an african and speaking as a kenyan like I, I don't know how it is in the rest of africa i feel it's the same mm. but speaking as a kenyan it's usually like if you want to do any extracurricular curricular activities like study first you know okay, you can always do this I've after <laughs> <laughs> you can always pay for this after you finish uni or after you finish high school mm. like at a later time that's not now for now study like focus on your books um so being very um which in a way was a good thing because i feel that's what helped me actually push push through okay. like push through and finish Yay. even when i got so tired it's what helped me push through but yeah being in the setting that we're in it's kind of you're pushed to, yeah, to always be busy, mm. but be busy with books above all Gosh. else at the time. But also there's also this age thing, I feel, which is usually, a, I, I feel ladies feel it a bit more heavier than males in a way, where it's like you need, you feel like you need to rush to finish something mm. by a particular like, okay. age ish because yeah. now when family starts coming so in and yeah yeah mm. you know before before you 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 it's like i have to finish this before yeah. and then before i go to this mm. like, but also above all else my mom when she was doing her masters she did her masters when we were in when i was in primary school and i think my my, my siblings already in high school oh. at the time and I saw her trying so to be a mom. Mm. I saw her trying mm. to be an employee. I saw her trying to be a wife. I trying saw her trying to, to be a student. And I told God, um, <laughs> at the very least, I need to have my master's before I settle down. At mm. the very least. Um, and, and, and God answers some prayers, you know? God answers some prayers. Yes. <laughs> in, <laughs> in a very serious way, but that's besides the point. <laughs> Yeah, so I finished um, I finished my first master's and when I decided I wanted to do this, I was like, okay, it's now or never. I don't really want to waste too much time because there's, al yeah. there's also the risk of once you take a break, mm. going back becomes so hard, Harder. you know? Do you feel like it would be like that for you? Absolutely. Mm, okay. Absolutely it would. Yeah. So I was like, no, if, I'm, if I've decided I'm doing this, I am jumping in when I still have the momentum because yeah. if I stop, then I might, yeah, this might never happen. And yeah, life is going to happen. But also I was looking like, eh, I also don't want to go back to school and I'm a bit too old. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, like those, those are a lot <laughs> of things um, that kind of worked together to get okay. me to that point to like you just jump straight jump into school. Into um, but yeah, I can say it's, it's, it's just something that looked like an eventuality, to be honest. Like it's like, it was always going to lead up to a point where I'm going to end up in healthcare one way or the other. Okay. Yeah. And, and okay, so when you switched, you know, to this new field of nursing, mm -hmm. did you then have to start from year one and how did that go? Okay, so nursing is a, in Curtin it's three and a half years, seven semesters, undergrad. In ECU, it's three years. I think in Murdoch, it's also three years. I think it's generally three years. In, mm. in Curtin, it's it's three and a half. 
um, but doing it at a master's. So to be able to qualify to do it at master's, um, you need to have at least an undergrad okay. in something different. Like so you've already studied something oh. different to be able to qualify. And what the master's basically is, is the undergrad content squished into two years. Mm. so it's like an accelerated nursing program so someone who's already done the undergrad wouldn't do the master's no so okay. if a, a person who's done an undergrad in nursing would do a master's to specialize okay in a particular area so i've done yes. my undergrad i'm a nurse and to specialize say in cardiology oh. i'll go and do masters in cardiology but the masters i was doing was to get my registration to actually mm. get into the practice so you went from the masters of um Science, forensic know, science, yeah, science into masters, masters of, nursing. of nursing, yeah. But to get my registration, so it's yeah, it's just a yeah. fancy name for the undergrad, uh, an accelerated okay. um, okay, undergrad program kind yes. of. But then with that, it means it's more intense because yeah. it's like what other people have, have three and a half years to learn. Years. Yeah, I need to cover in two years. In two years, yeah. Oh my goodness, it like, almost broke me. But oh. here we are. <laughs> Honestly, like, cause I remember every time we met, cause even I did like ha halfway a degree, some degrees, <laughs> <laughs> and we were the same. We were both at Murdoch, and yeah. we would meet, and you were always rushing somewhere. Like we were always, <laughs> like we would not complain, but you know, like <laughs> let me say, just complain. But you know, if I look of a better word, we complain about how difficult this is, and yet you know, you kept going, and then I hear that no, she's doing something else, and I, anyway. From that point, anyway, I, I knew you you were gonna continue. I could tell, but I thought you'd do like a PhD, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> but I'm thinking she's continuing every time. It's hard, and that's why like it's been so difficult to get her to come mm. because she's got assignments, she's got this, she's got um placements, she's got she is so busy, <laughs> so busy, and at the same time, like when she says, you can tell like. It's quite stressful. It's difficult because, you know, she speaks honestly about how she's feeling, mm. even though she looks like she's coping and she's okay. So I want us to tell us, like, how how have you been coping? How do you cope with all this stress that you've gone through? I mean, on top of that, you could not go home. Like, you have not gone home yeah. in seven years. In seven years, yeah. H how? <sighs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you have tissues? <laughs> <laughs> um, being, I feel like sometimes you, you need to vent, which will sometimes come out as complaining, which sometimes is a coping mechanism. Like you just yeah, need to yeah. let it By the out. Way, I never felt you were complaining. <laughs> I was complaining more. Like I, <laughs> and thank you for listening. I always felt like you're actually listening, even though I was telling you big things, <laughs> big adult things. <laughs> I'm told I'm a good listener. I think it's a good thing I to be. You <laughs> listen with such grace to all my pain. <laughs> yeah. Um, prayer. I feel like prayer has been a big thing. And yeah. through this, especially the past three years, I feel my relationship with God has really been tested. Wow. Greatly. Mm. <laughs> greatly. Mm. Um, so prayer, not only my own, but my parents especially my mom. Oh, my mom is such a prayer warrior. Oh, oh wow. my goodness. Like, if I can grow oh, to be goodness. half the woman my mother is. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, she's, she's, oh, my mom oh, is amazing. We love prayer um, Oh, oh no, I, I, I honestly feel like I'm standing here on the prayers of my mother. Oh, like, she's, hallelujah. yeah, she's, she's, she's amazing. Wow. But also the support and prayers of my friends. Like, mm. I have, as I mentioned when we're starting, I have such a strong solid yeah circle around me oh. that i do not take for granted like they are an amazing group of people that is incredible but also therapy mm. Eh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> therapy i where would we be without yeah. therapy i i i i'm not going to lie i needed a lot of therapy as well yeah i needed a lot of therapy especially that initially uh, when i joined in 2021 was my was the beginning of my I, I i dabbled in therapy a bit at murdoch at some point yeah ish yeah but actually got into it with this 
second degree. Wow. So was it like the the you doubling into therapy and giving it a chance back in Murdoch, was that what made you open up to it and feel like, you know what, I need to be doing this as part of my coping mechanism? No, I was I was actually pushed into it by a lecturer. Okay. <laughs> at some point when I wasn't coping, my lecturer was actually like, you actually need to need go, to go there. there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it was uh. it was that lecture because in Murdoch, like, I I doubled in it a bit, but being the African, being the Kenyan that I am, yeah, therapy yeah. is, is not wasn't a thing when I was growing up. Yeah. It was like, you feel, what are you feeling depressed mm. about? Do you Learn. like you know? Do you have a roof over your head? Yeah. Do you have yeah. food? Do you have clothes? <laughs> is your school fees paid? What's the problem? Hey, you, know what I mean? hey. you are studying in what? Australia. What do you mean? What what reason <laughs> do you problem? have? So I, yeah, I, I struggled to get into therapy, I think because of coming from that background and, yeah. and where it's like, if you're struggling, it's like, you know, in frozen, conceal, don't feel like keep it okay. in, oh. you know? Um, yeah, I, we weren't mm. growing up. I don't think we were encouraged to, no. to speak out if you feel a story. And even then I don't think we would have pointed it out pinpointed it as either depression or anxiety mm. or whatever it was. We didn't even have a name because, for it. Yeah, we didn't have a name for it because mm. what right do you have to feel like that when you have everything? If anything, you felt like you're being ungrateful. You're ungrateful. Like you felt guilty yeah. for, for feeling, feeling that, yeah. some type of way. Yeah. But yeah, when, when I reached that kind of breaking point is when I actually went to therapy. And it took a bit to actually get into it because there was this kind of guilt of Am I this weak yeah, okay. that I can't <laughs> deal with my own problems? Yeah. I actually need to go and sit down for an hour a week or every oh, two weeks to talk to about my about problems <laughs> and to cry. And honestly, when I would cry in therapy, I would be so embarrassed. Oh. I would be so like, I would be so hard. On, it's like, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I You're never. Judging yourself. <laughs> I was judging myself, and honestly, I did not. It took a very, very, very long time for me to actually tell my friends that I was going to therapy. Oh, oh my friends didn't know for the longest time. Did you feel, did you feel embarrassed that you were oh, therapy? I, I felt like it was shameful. Oh. I, like, it, it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah, I've grown. Like, now I'm, I, I talk about therapy openly. Yeah, oh, ah. yeah. It's like, oh, you're struggling. You should try you therapy. You should try therapy. <laughs> Have you tried yeah. therapy? Like, <laughs> I don't want to look like I'm marketing therapy, but. Yeah. It, oh no! It, it, Let's it market works. therapy. <laughs> Listen, therapy is a lifeline. It oh works. Oh my goodness! It works. So, so it looks like also you've you've always had just positive experience with therapy because it's not always like um, the case that the oh. first time you go you find someone that aligns with you. Not always. No. Okay. In murder. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. the, fir the first time I went to therapy, I got this man, mm. this guy, <laughs> and. I've come to appreciate that dynamics are different here with regards to family. Mm. This is not generalizing, but from what I've observed from my experience, Australians, not all Australians have strong family ties. Yeah. It's usually just your immediate family. And even then, sometimes it's just like everyone's doing their own thing. Like there's this strong sense yeah. of independence, independence yeah. like there's this strong sense of you do your thing i do my thing mm -hmm. and whatever you do your consequences deal with your consequences on your yeah. own Ca like there's a bit of detachment i don't know how to explain it whereas back home like it's a like a family affair like yeah. people's like someone will do something that you had nothing to like that had nothing to do with you but it would affect you in a big mm. way um, like random example, like say if my brother was to do something and get arrested, like I would, I would lose sleep. Yeah, like okay. I would, I would, like it would disturb. It's not his, it's not his issue. It's, it's yeah, like your, yeah. It, it's a family mm. thing. Whereas here, yeah, someone would be like, yeah, they, they, they got themselves into that. So whatever kind of thing. Ish. So there's something that was happening <laughs> around family at that time. Mm. And so I just, you know, needed to talk to someone. Yeah. Like that's the first time I was like, my, maybe I should yeah, talk to someone. And and the first time I went in, you know, we're talking. 
and I'm there like I'm, a, I'm such a crier to be honest. I am a crier, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying I'm trying I'm trying to get out what's happening and I'm just you know so yeah, emotional. And, and he's listening and he's writing notes and then he asks, <laughs> "Okay, um I I don't mean to to negate your experience and I don't mean to take away from your experience and I don't mean to belittle your experience. But why do you feel that that affects you so much? Like it's so and so like they're the ones who did that like they need to deal with the consequences of their Them action so. like w- why do you feel so affected and that's why i felt that this guy was like yeah this is not gonna this work is not this, ah. is, this, is, this is not gonna work and was was he the way he said it as well did he also feel like he's not it, even empathetic like i feel like he, i feel like he was trying okay he was but he, he was <laughs> trying <laughs> he was trying but there's only so much you can try when you don't relate to yeah an experience so okay. he he tried, but he, he just couldn't meet me there. Um, and oh, no. And, yeah, so yeah. I, that was the last time <laughs> I went to therapy <laughs> for a while. Um, because also, I guess at the same time, it then fed into when I, what I would say when I down talk myself. Because mm. something would truly bother me. And then when I say it out loud, it sounds dumb. And I'm like, this is dumb. You have no right to feel this way. Mm. When in essence, it actually is really taking a toll yeah. on me. So he inadvertently made, okay, made me feel like I'm overreacting. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like he he validated the negative voice in my head that oh. you're being dramatic. Yeah. Like, you th- like this, this shouldn't be affecting you that, that much. Yeah, it's yeah. not that deep. It was. Oh. But it's not, like... So it was like... And I... It also came with now I was second guessing myself like okay, am I the problem? Am I being dramatic? Uh, yeah. maybe, maybe it's not a big deal. Like maybe, maybe I'm being dramatic. Yeah. Like it, yeah. So it, it came with a bit of a oh, negative no. yeah. thing at yeah. the time. So I was like, yeah, I think they're right. Like therapy is not. Uh. <laughs> it's so, so good that it did give it give it a chance. Yeah, it was yeah. A lecture. What do you mind sharing? What was happening? Why the lecturer said, look, you. You need to try therapy. Um, okay, so <laughs> so I had um, it was my first semester at the time. Yeah. Um, in the nursing. Yes, in nursing. Um, I had just started. I was going to graduate initially. So I finished in December twenty twenty. So I was to graduate in February of twenty twenty one. Our borders were still shut at the time, mm. so people couldn't come in. Um, and also being a seventh day Adventist, <laughs> the day for our graduation was set on Saturday. Mm. So I then pushed it forward and I was like, um, hopefully in September, it might not be on Saturday, but also giving that leeway of hopefully our borders will be open. So my parents can come, come. kind of thing. Um, so I think our borders did eventually open. But yeah, my parents weren't still able to come. But the graduation was on Saturday, so praise God, yeah, our prayer was awesome. answered. But anyway, around the time my mom got sick, um, and by the time they're then letting me know, she'd been s- sick for about a month. Mm-hmm. By the time they're like, oh yeah, yeah, so this is what is going on, da 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 da, mm-hmm. and at the time, she'd been to hospital, like she, she they'd run several tests. They couldn't find what was wrong. What's the problem? Yeah. But she was still, you know, mm. actively sick. Um, and then at the time, we were having a bit, we were in the middle of moving <laughs> houses at the time. Mm. And by that time, real estate had started being a bit oh, goodness. mad. Mm. But also at the same time, we were having a hard time with our landlord of the house we were in at the time before we moved to where we are now. Okay. We, were, we were having like a back and forth um, about rent and about the moving situation because they wanted us out on the exact day but when we got a house before they're like yeah no 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 we are we're still not letting you go until the very last minute oh and uh, like there was just a what back and forth mm. yeah there's just a back and forth around the rental situation and then being in school like being in school a new course it was it was hard mm. it was very challenging just being in a new environment Yay. altogether and then my graduation was coming up obviously my parents were uh, weren't able to come um. but just actively knowing that my mom is it's unwell well. you know um and then these are some of the things that i say don't make sense because i was just in my first 
semester, so, yeah. not even first year, first semester of nursing, I did not know much at all. But at the time, knowing my mom is sick and they're explaining this, and I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. Like, I'm trying oh, to read books. Oh I'm trying no. to, like, Where you going? Like, to Dr. Google. Yeah. Oh, no. And, you know, trying to search what my nursing textbooks have? and, like, consulting any doctors that oh. I know. And at the same time, I'm like, okay, so why am I in healthcare if I can't help my mom? Like, oh. why am I even doing this nursing? Like, obviously, like, now that I say it, it does not make oh. sense. But I feel like I was just spiraling. Yes. Like, I just started spiraling oh. at the time. Yeah. And any time, like, I'm speaking to my mom, and she's, in, like, admitted in hospital. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Oh. I want to be home. Yeah. You know? Like, I need to be able to see her. Like, there's that fear of, if that anything sh- happens, happens. And you're not there. And I'm not there. And remember, I think the first time I came on your... um when we were interviewing me, I think we were speaking on the backdrop of there's an uncle who had died yeah. and there's a friend who had Your died. And the uncle of mine who died, it was just like months after I'd come to Australia. So I definitely you couldn't, like going go. back home yeah. was not an option. So like all these fears start oh, playing man. in your That's mind. A lot. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot, especially the fact that they're not mm. finding what's wrong. Mm. Like they're not actually yeah. pointing. Yeah. So it's not like they can yeah. do something like, to It's make not like better. I can say, oh, she's, she's being treated. She's, she's, she's getting mm. better. She wasn't. So all these things. Oh, bless your heart. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was so... Oh, no, I can imagine. It was so hard. Yeah. So obviously my education got affected. And that mm. was a whole other scenario. Because um, growing up, I've always done well. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, you can say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm, a, I'm okay. always being top of the <laughs> class, number one. Like, among the top, yeah. I, yeah. I, I usually feel so weird saying this. No, it's, no. Anyhow. Um, <laughs> even me, once upon a time, I was position one every it's, time. Yeah. I whole like the whole premise. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel, I feel it's, it's, it's just how you're brought up, you know. Like, be humble. humble. Don't, yeah. don't yeah. toot your own horn. So <laughs> that usually comes so hard out of my mouth. So I've always been among the top. The top up of this water. <laughs> so I've always done well. Mm. Um... Then when I got to uni, when I got to undergrad, I was still doing well. But again, I think that perfectionism yeah. was kind of also getting to me. Like yeah. this, I remember the first kind of unit I kind of didn't do well. I, I almost had a mental breakdown. And my mom sat me down and she was like, it's not that deep. Relax. Oh. You know, like... Who sat you down? My mom. Okay. She was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. It's, it's, not, okay. it's not a matter of life oh. and death. Anyhow. So yeah, from your, then... Your perfectionism, <laughs> it would have felt that way. Yeah. That so the from then... over. I gave myself a bit of grace. Mm. So there are things obviously around then as well that happened. Like life is not always perfect. So I did go through a few seasons of ups and downs. But despite struggling, I never failed. Mm. Right? Like I I might have like I might have been struggling with, you know, with whatever was going on at the time. But the worst I got was say like a C. Like okay. I never had, I never outright failed and had to redo units mm. at the time. Um, and when I came to Murdoch, obviously with the transition, with the change, there are times that I was going through it, yeah. you know, being in a new country, being alone, adjusting. But still, despite the difficulty at the time, I still didn't fail. I did get a C here and there, but I still graduated with a distinction. So that's fine. Oh, um, wow. But okay. I... <laughs> <laughs> but I like these units that I didn't do as well as I'd have wanted. Okay. But I still didn't fail. Yeah. But this time when I was spiraling, I actually failed. My goodness. And that was very oh. disillusioning because you were already going this through is, so much. This is something I have, because at the time I thought I was going crazy. I actually had to talk to some of my other friends from back mm. home who, I guess, were also bright. Yeah. Like, and other people to just hear what the experience was like. Yeah. And it boiled down to this. Growing up as a child who performs well, your sense of identity is intricately linked yeah. to your ability to perform. Yeah. So, who mm. am I? My name is Rita and I perform well, Basically. kind of thing, yeah. you know, yeah. like, that's who you are. Yeah. Like yeah. my, my sense of identity is, is, is mm. intertwined with my ability to perform. Yeah. And so when 
despite what was going on, despite having valid reasons to be distracted and not be able to concentrate on my studies, when I failed, I think that was the final straw. Mm. It actually broke me. Oh. Like, it, it, it did. And, yeah, that's when I actually went into therapy. And it, t- <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, took, it took the therapist at the time <laughs> working on me quite a bit yeah. to... <laughs> To 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 oh, like unravel, like to untangle mindset. my sense of yeah. self and my performance, and like wow. you can fail, but you're not a failure. Yeah, oh, that's powerful. You know, yeah, you, you just yeah. happen to have failed. Yeah, that yeah. does not mean you're a failure. Wow, you know, yeah. It, it took a while to be able to get me to drill yeah. that because I was Goodness, so I totally hard get that. on myself, and I mm. thank God, um, I got an. Listen, this has nothing to do with race because m- the second time I was going to therapy, I had an Australian. But the first, like the first therapist I I worked with when I was in the thick of it, mm. was an Asian, mm. and they kind of they got it. They, she got it. Yeah, she the expectation to perform, to perform, to be, and mm-hmm. and the strong family ties yeah. as well, and how that was affecting me at the time. It Love truly that. helped to have yeah. someone. Yeah. Who could understand mm. what I was trying to express when words were deficient? Yeah, like wow. when I couldn't find the right words to express what I was trying to say. Yeah, she got, she it. got it. And it's a, honestly, oh, it's, it's when you get a therapist, you click with. Yeah, it is life changing. Yeah, because yeah. I feel if I got a therapist like the one I got at Murdoch. I was actually contemplating to quit school. I was like, yeah, I I don't think this is for oh, me because I was like, yeah. yeah. Like I was, I was doubting my. I was like, maybe I'm not cut out to do this. Like maybe I'm not bright oh, enough. Wow. Like there was so much going on at the time. Yeah. Anyhow, we ah. got through it. I thank God. Um, and yeah, so it was. It it took a lot. That much. Wow. Like I'm. So, I'm so glad that <laughs> you know, God actually. You know, God orders our steps. You know, he, I, like I, I can just, as you're saying. Mm. I can hear that. Wow, look at God. Yeah. He made sure you got a type of therapy that you needed at, at the, the time. time that you needed. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not strong enough for any other yeah. therapies. You needed that one and he made it happen. Yeah. And it I'm was so it was glad. amazing. She told me at, at, during one of our sessions, she's like, you know, I'm so glad that you get to experience failure now. Mm. and develop a healthy relationship with With failure failure. Mm. and get to detach yourself from when you fail Mm. and at the time it didn't make sense i was about to throw hands i was like what 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 do you mean (laughs) um but i get it because she's like when you when you finish nursing you're going to be dealing with people's lives and if you have not learned Mm. There are times that things might go wrong. There are times that mm. you might misstep. There are times that maybe you might make a call that you feel was the right one, but is not the right one. And it might inadvertently affect a patient or whatever. Like mm-hmm. things People can die. Can, yeah, like things can go wrong. And if you don't learn mm. how to separate yourself from that, and, and if you don't learn to be gentle with yourself and tell yourself, okay, yeah. I failed. What can I learn yeah. from this experience yeah. moving forward? nursing is going to crush you you're not gonna make it yeah and wow that, yeah that, it was that it, was awesome yeah so it it it's it's, it's awesome because honestly like as africans we really don't have a good it's not just an african thing you know yeah. it's, a, it's a human thing like yeah. we don't have a good relationship with failure yeah you know we do entangle ourselves with our identity as yeah now i'm a failure but when you look at like these people, all these millionaires, people who have succeeded, it's because they have such positive relationship with mm, failure. Mm. They are okay with failing, mm. and that's why they're able to keep trying new things. They learn things. from it. They learn from it. They know, okay, that's not how to do it. Okay, yeah. try it. Oh, okay, so we don't do it that way. Okay, yeah. let's try again. And that's how we need to be with failure. Yeah, I love that. And I love the point as well of, you know, learning self-compassion, because that's what I'm learning in therapy hey. as well. Being self compassion positive thoughts to yourself speak to yourself like you're speaking to a friend mm. always stranger you know how would you speak to someone else yeah. you know you need to be the kindest person to you to you because you are the person 
that lives with you, that's stuck with you forever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And some well, of us are the meanest to ourselves. We are the like, meanest. It, it took therapy for me to see how critical and mm. unforgiving of yourself you of are. Of myself I was. <laughs> Yeah, that's perfectionism. It was oh. perfectionism. But yeah. Because I think the the moment you, you just accept that I am only human, mm. I falter. I am imperf- imperfect. Yes. You know, I I, I need God. Mm. You, you are able to. I mean I'm st- I'm still learning as well. But I love so that. Am I. <laughs> I love that. So am I. Yeah. And also like I'm so happy, like, because I remember last time we had spoken, it was a struggle finding friends, you know. I'm so glad to hear oh, yes. how amazing your <laughs> friends are. And I have seen them. And you guys, like, I see you. Ooh, like, I see, I see, you know, ish, I've seen Rita glow up. She glow is up. traveling. She's always here and her friends. And they, they look like money, you know. <laughs> but I can see they're such amazing people. Your friends are like, yeah. I'm really happy for you. Oh, and I'm you. hearing, like, when you talk about the stress of moving house, like you said, we, we, and I'm assuming you live with your with friends? my friends. Yeah, I live with my best friend. Yeah. Oh, yes. I love that you found that. <laughs> I love that. And it's takes grace. It's grace. Yeah. You know, you know, like in the book of Esther, when when Mordecai is telling her, who knows whether you you came, you know, like you got this position for a time such as, as this. this. I've had like for a time such as this moments like so many of oh, them wow. where it's like when you're in the thick of it you don't you don't see the big picture yeah but when you're through it and you, look, you look back, back you and you're like, like i oh. see i see why i see the why video of hindsight yeah love it thank you so much Rita. like we, we we're running out of time right? there's so much we wanted to talk about and yeah. you know um like I, I, I've been, yeah, I've really, truly been so inspired, honestly, just seeing how the change in you from the moment I saw this beautiful girl sitting alone at our church, oh, thank you know, you and <laughs> oh, goodness, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel mm. <laughs> to her now. When did you start preaching? Like. <laughs> She came to our church. She left our church, by the way, because we are not <laughs> traditional enough. You know, uh, I go to, <laughs> we are we are Seventh Day Adventists, yeah. and our church is like a contemporary version of it. We don't do hymns and things like that. <laughs> we do do hymns, but you know, so we are like sort of like Hillsong, the way we worship, drums and everything. So she left. She went to she go to a different Seventh Day Adventist, which has <laughs> hymns, hymns and everything. <laughs> so. <laughs> No, so she came to our I, church and she was preaching. I thought, wait, <laughs> is that Rita? What do you mean? Um, <laughs> no, in my defense, at the time it was culture shock. Yeah. At the time, I I I could not. I was having a hard time. Yeah. Relating. Oh. It was so hard. But now, now I can. Like yeah. now, now I'm now I'm good. Yeah. Now I'm good. <laughs> at the time, it was, you know, it was. Yeah, no, it was a crazy time. <laughs> and then, especially like you, you're very expressive. Yeah. So I remember I was looking at you and you're singing and you have your hands <laughs> out in the air and you're feeling the spirit, <laughs> you know? And and I'm looking around and everyone is feeling the spirit and I'm like, the spirit is passing me by. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> is, the, <laughs> is the spirit passing me by? Why am I Why not, am I not connecting? <laughs> No, that is it was funny. The- I understand that because when we first moved here, <laughs> I say we, we moved here <coughs> at the time, like even the last time when we recorded, I was still married. Yeah. <laughs> so we moved here and um, our friends were telling us, whatever you do, do not go to Livingston Church. Hey. You know? <laughs> and they were like, when they were describing it, it was like, ooh, <laughs> it sounds like that's where we want to go. You know? <laughs> yeah. Because sadly, like when we were in England, um, our son got unwell mm. and un- unfortunately like he died but at the time when he was unwell he was at a hospital where like this you know Great Ormond Street we had gone there in an emergency with the helicopters mm. and we were just we just had trainers and jeans and tops no clothes and we knew our fellow Adventists there's no way we can get go to church like this yeah so we ended up going to Hillsong yeah which was a walking distance away and that's how we connected with that kind of music mm. and that kind of worship and 
since then. Like it's been, <laughs> yeah, it's been because you know we connected with the, at the time when we needed God. We yes, needed, we needed fellowship mm. and Christians mm. and our fellow Christians. We knew there is no way they would, yeah, no way, which is sad. It is. It's so sad. <laughs> we knew you can't go with your trainers and jeans to an Adventist church. What are you thinking? Yeah, here you can. Here you actually. can. Here you can, but yeah, back in England, oh, oh. conservative, oh. Ooh, ooh. you know, because the church, the church is largely, you know, black Caribbean, Afro yeah. Caribbean, and there is no way. So yeah, that's how our relationship with, with contemporary music yeah, started. started. But that's such a beautiful yeah, relationship. Yeah. So when we heard that, oh, that ch this church is like that, we're like, oh, that's, that's our where church. I want to go. <laughs> Understandably, understandably. Yeah, yeah. In in closing, H, thank you so much, Rita. <laughs> once again, when I did ask Rita to prepare three questions to ask me, but I don't know. Maybe we'll just do one. I don't know. I don't know if we have time. We're already, you know, <laughs> way chatty, out, chatty. Of, <laughs> out of time. Okay. One question I'll ask is: You you meet your eighteen year old self. Mm -hmm. You're only allowed to say three words. What do you say? Faith. Growth. Mm. Change. Okay. Faith, growth, change. change. Love it. Yeah. Like, I feel those have been the key themes mm. of my life. Not even since I was 18, but especially since I came to Australia. Like, mm. it's, it's taken so much wow. faith. Yeah to get through mm. like to get to where i am yeah. like it's been it's been it's yeah. been yeah i i lack words to to put Ish. Yeah. but it's been it's been a lot of faith wow growth mm. I've, <laughs> I've had to first of all grow out of my comfort zone yeah. i've had to grow out of some frames of mind, frames of thought that we grew up with, for ex like we've already mm, discussed that, like yeah. where your, your, you know, your, your sense of worth is linked to mm. your productivity or how well you perform. The things I've had to outgrow. Mm. And I still am growing. I'm grateful for that. I yeah. recognize that. And yeah, thankful. And change, change, change is the only constant thing. Yeah. I did not think it would come to a time um, very very practical example. I did not think it would come to a time that I would appreciate contemporary Christian music, mm, and that's yeah. that's that's yeah. the myth. Like usually, you know, when we do the Spotify rap, like that's usually my my largest genre. Like wow. that's like yeah. that's the like I, I obviously still absolutely love our hymns yeah. and things, and it's still the worship I prefer mm, mm. when it comes to church. Yeah, but. I have gained such mm. like my my view towards people and towards things has changed vastly yeah. and continues wow. to change every day. That's good. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Faith, growth, change. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. In that with those words, <laughs> thank you so much, Rita, for coming. <laughs> uh, it's been wonderful. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get my questions that Rita has prepared for me. Okay, I did ask her to ask me three questions. Okay, take it away. <laughs>